We just heard the classic title cut from the Beach Boys' 1964 album, All Summer Long, and once again, Endless Summer Quarterly editor David Beard joins us to chat about another great album in the Beach Boys catalog, this time, of course, 1964's All Summer Long. And, David, let's start with the cover. It's a collage of photos of the Beach Boys and various stages of having fun. It sort of sets the tone for what this album's going to be. Yeah, the photo shoot was done uh, down at Paradise Cove, the same place where they did their uh, Surf and Safari album cover shoot. Right. And it, the funny thing about that is Al missed both. Um, <laughs> but uh, this time he was not feeling well, so he didn't make the, the trip down there. But to me, knowing that it was at Paradise Cove, it's kind of like them going back to where you know wh- where they came from, so to speak. Right. You know, so musically and otherwise, and they went back down there, and they just had a a day of fun. They hired uh, three models because the the dad, Murray Wilson, did not feel that the wives and the girlfriends were beach girl material. So he he <laughs> kind of said, you need to hire some some beach girls or something. And Mike Love told me it was a bit awkward because they kind of showed up to the shoot and they had to act like they knew these girls. Right, And yeah. they said, go. <laughs> yeah, there's the one girl like playing with Brian's hair on the cover. Brian has no idea who she is. <laughs> exactly. <Right. laughs> um, they played a little football. They all did individual poses, doing different things. Then they buried Carl in the sand after they did a little grilling. They actually had a little grill down the beach and they did some cook, you know, hot dogs and stuff. Although Al was not at the thing, he was he did go to Griffith Park and they he and his uh, wife Linda, that's Linda Jardine, not a model, um <laughs> that he uh, rode a, on a tandem bike with. The reason I'm bringing all this up is because it does speak to who they were, you know, young men in their early 20s. Um writing about and singing about their lives. And this this was not a a surf album. This was not a uh, car album. To me, it is the consummate summer album. You can look at that cover, and you can see who they are. Well, let's get into the songs. Obviously, we're not going to have time to play every single track off this album, but uh, let's begin discussing track number one, and a song that I think is one of the greatest records ever made by anybody ever, I Get Around. I Get Around is kind of the perfect machismo recording of all time. The only other group that was kind of as masculine, if you will, as the Beach Boys were the Four Seasons. And they were singing Walk Like a Man. Right. So they were kind of saying, you know, be a man, come on. (laughs) And the Beach Boys said, well, we are. Yeah, and you talk about in the new uh, issue of ESQ that that covers this album that Mike contributed to the arranging of the introduction of this song. Brian had a different beginning, and he said, listen, let's let's make this like Barbaran. Mm -hmm. You know, ba, 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 Baran, let's do it. Round, round, get around, I get around. Just like that. Let's do it that way. And they had a longer bass note. I mean, Mike, Mike was sitting in the booth and going, no, no, I mean, I've got it on the session. I hear it. He says, no, let's, that, that bass line, that bass note's too long. Let's, let's make that shorter. Yeah, and you know, you mentioned it's, it's a macho song, but there's also some dissatisfaction creeping into the lyrics. You know, I want to get out of this town. I want to leave these people behind and find a new place where the kids are hip. Yeah, it's, it's exactly right. The song I get around is about street cred. But it is, you know, I'm getting bug driving up and down the same old strip. I've got to find a new place where the kids are hip. Yep. I don't think those are Mike Love's lyrics. I'm, I'm sure the majority of this song is, is Mike. Uh, but those are Brian Wilson words to me. Yep. And the, the words, I'm driving up and down the same old strip, I think that's Brian as a metaphor in his mind. You got it. Tired of writing the same old material and ready to move on. And, and Mike, being Brian's perfect lyrical foil... Just said, okay, we'll 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 make it a metaphor, and we'll we'll make this work, and this will be all about a guy in his car with his chick. Yeah. But it's so much more. We're taking a look at the Beach Boys' 1964 album All Summer Long with our guest, Endless Summer Quarterly editor David Beard, and uh, the song that we began this discussion with all summer long the title track happens to be track two and this is your ultimate summer song in fact for brian wilson it's something of an autobiographical summer song yeah because it's it almost tells the story of how he met his wife Mary. that's right 
spilling the Coke on her blouse. Yeah, I mean, yeah. At the, at the, I, I can't remember what venue it was, but she came to see him, and she was in the front row, and he, and maybe Pandora is that right? It might. Remember. Yeah, I think so. I think so. But he he went over to meet her, and he he, he knocked her drink over on her, and the rest is history. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I, it, it's such a it's such a very interesting kind of a clunky song too. It's it's kind of clunky. It's not it's not a mainstream recording, and that may be why it was never released as a single. What's interesting about it too is that lyrically, it's not really a narrative. This song, you know, it's more like a series of lyrical snapshots of a great summer that you once had. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. It's almost like hitting a bunch of different nostalgic buttons. Absolutely, and that nostalgia comes to the fore quite literally in the next track on the album. It's a cover of the old Mystic song "Hushabye." And what an amazing vocal workout for the boys! Yeah, it's it's um, I I don't know what part I like the most. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all so great. I mean, it's almost it, it's uh, it's Brian's falsetto on that. It's just absolutely just mind blowing, and it's like it's like it's it's like listening to um, cream pour out of a cup. <laughs> Up next on the All Summer Long album is a song that I think most people would associate with the Hondells rather than the Beach Boys, and that's Little Honda. Absolutely. It's, it's because the, the boys never released it as a single, which is kind of bizarre. Very, very bizarre. Um, you know, Mike, he even said he, he recognized that. He said, I always thought that Little Honda should have been a single. It's a great song. Yep. A lot of energy, very upbeat. It's a great album track, that's for sure. And it's interesting. It did it did come out on the Four by the Beach Boys EP. Yep. But it, that was such a strange release that I don't know what happened in terms of <laughs> radio play. I mean, it, you know, the Hondells just got it. So they were the ones who were able to run with it. And up next on the album, track five, talk about cream pouring out of a cup, We'll Run Away. Yeah, um, when I asked Mike about this, he said, I love Brian's voice on this song. He really gave an amazing performance. We know the right. You're listening to a discussion between myself and David Beard, editor of Endless Summer Quarterly magazine, as we talk track by track through the Beach Boys All Summer Long album, released 50 years ago, 1964, and up next, an instrumental, Carl's Big Chance. Yeah, originally titled Memphis Beach. Um, I think they ended up changing this because the title to it because Carl plays lead, and, you know, on Shutdown Volume 2, they had done Denny's Drums. So I think they were right. just kind of <laughs> saying, well, let's, this is Carl's Big Chance, you know, and it was probably a tongue-in-cheek title, like, don't blow it, Carl. Right. Um, if you've ever listened to these guys in the studio during the sessions, I'm sure that's what it was. It was probably a challenge to him to not blow it, more than it was them saying, way to go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because, you know, Carl was 18 years old. When you know that and you understand that and you listen to it, it's pretty amazing. The first time I ever heard this album, it was on cassette, and Carl's Big Chance was not on it. So oh, it, it, you it, got that re-release yep, from the seventies. Yep, and so it was a revelation to me to find out that there was another track on there. Because <laughs> I thought yeah. we'll run away. What a perfect side closer! But no, there's one more. <laughs> uh, we'll flip the record over and get to. Uh, well, this is easily one of my favorite of the uh, early period Beach Boy songs. I even enjoy the cough that one hears during the instrumental break, and uh, I'm talking about the song Wendy. Just to dispel any rumors out there, this is 64. Wendy Wilson wasn't born until years later, and she told me, and it appears in this issue, uh, Brian wanted to call Wendy Dolores, and Marilyn <laughs> said, no way. <laughs> so the song has nothing to do with the daughter. This is a dynamic uh, song, and, and I hear a lot of the little girl I once knew in this in yeah. terms of the way the song, the, the way the song is arranged. Uh, and the percussion is used, um, and the stops in it. When I asked Mike about the song, he said he just he just immediately was pointing to Brian and said, you know, the learning curve was being advanced quite rapidly with everything that Brian was learning. He was just beginning to use other studio musicians around this time too. So there was this was kind of the last true Beach Boys album in terms of who was in the studio, who was playing. Like on Carl's Big Chance, Mike actually plays tenor sax. Right. 
So, you know, at this point, Brian was slowly bringing in some of the Wrecking Crew, but for the most part, this album is the Beach Boys, but there are some uh, of, you know, Hal Blaine on some recordings and, and things like that, you know, and some of the professionals. So there's an evolution that takes place both in Brian's uh, abilities in the studio and what he was doing with Mike lyrically and how those songs were glow, you know, growing over a two-year period that, you know, May of 66 resulted in Pet Sounds. And we'll send that song out to Norm, who requested that one as well. Wendy, as we go track by track here on the All Summer Long album, and up next we've got a song that's kind of a condensed history of rock and roll music up to that point. Do you remember? Well, first off, let's let's go back to 63. The, the, the track itself is a rewrite of the song called The Big Beat. Right. And so they, they, they used the same track and melody and then rewrote, you know, wrote the, 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 the lyrics, Do You Remember? And Mike said, uh, Danny and the Juniors at the hop is what inspired the song. And it was an homage to all the early great rock and roll they were directly influenced by and hearing on the radio. He said, we even did... Uh, Many of the, you know, he pointed out they did many of those songs in concerts by the artists early on when they didn't have enough material of their own. Uh, up next, we have uh, sort of what many people have considered son of Surfer Girl, Girls on the Beach. I'll just tell you a quick story. Uh, a friend of mine who's also a big Beach Boys fan, I remember once years ago, uh, he listened to this song on his way down to the beach uh, to sort of pump him up and get him energized to talk to girls on the beach because the song says they're all there waiting for for you and uh, they're all within reach so he went down there listening to that song believing every word and uh, he struck out and he told me it's all a dirty lie but i (laughs) i still appreciate the song and and just again what another tremendous vocal performance from the group it it really is, and you know, you you listen to this. Um, you know, the the thing that I spoke to Mike about the, with this particular track was, if you really listen, I mean, if you either have the speakers turned way up and you got nice separation, or if you have headphones on, Mike's bass is is really a little bit separate from everything, and it's really dense, and it and it really balances out the song well because it's Brian's wonderful falsetto that just takes this thing into the the ether you know you watch the beginning of the 1965 girls on the beach film and it kind of just as much as your friend's trip it it kind of it it, the song is so good it sells it it would girls on the beach is not a good film yeah it's not it's it's really it's horrible and the fact that they got the beach boys to be in it made it better because the film plot is a bunch of girls trying to go around to find the beatles and it's horrible that the story should have been finding the Beach Boys and then seeing the Beach Boys in concert. Exactly. That should that yep. should have been the story. But unfortunately it didn't work out that way. So you have this great you have all this great music from the Beach Boys in there. No music from the Beatles of course. Right. Weak plot, bad movie. This is a little off track, but counterbalance that with the summer of sixty four when the movie Ride the Wild Surf comes out. Mm-hmm. And here's a genuine legit movie about Surfers. I mean, now, granted, they're actors, you know, right. uh, Tab Hunter and, you know, whatnot, but it, it was still the theme, the movie was surfers legitimately at the beach. That was the storyline. So it wasn't like some bizarre, concocted, weird, let's go find the Beatles right. thing. You know, it was all, it's almost insulting that the Beatles right. were in Girls in the Beach. You're right. You're right. It's, 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 it's kind of ludicrous, <laughs> but th- th- it was, their music is what makes it watchable. <laughs> right, the right. only points where I can get through it. So back in '65, when the film came out, if you're in your car driving and maybe you heard "Girls on the Beach," I don't know if it got any radio play, but if you hear it, you'd be like, just like your friend, oh gosh, I have to go see this film. This is a great song. And just like your friend, you know, to his mid dismay, it wasn't quite like the song sells it. And <laughs> the same is true with the film. <laughs> I, I think the one member of the Beach Boys who enjoyed the film, uh, just being in it, was Dennis. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and, and, and it's obvious why. <laughs> and, he's, and he's the one guy who could go down, and the girls on the beach is probably true to how his life <laughs> right. was. For Dennis, it's all true. <laughs> it's all true. 
We're talking to the editor of Endless Summer Quarterly magazine, David Beard, about the Beach Boys album all summer long. And up next, as we go track by track, well, a song I guess a lot of people consider a throwaway. It's just just a fun song, Drive In. Yeah, this this I think was just not to, not to do it any discredit because it's this is just a purely fun recording. But this is I think this is just an album filler, you know, per, yeah. you know, grinding it out, getting it out. These guys were so busy uh in, in 64. It it just amazes me, you know, just quick note, you know, the album came out on July 13th. In June, by the end of June before this album came out, they were already done with their Christmas album sessions. Wow. This was a group that was if they weren't on the road, they were in the studio or doing a photo shoot. These guys were busy. And you know, they were the perfect age for it, granted. But uh, it ended up for the uh, photo shoot for the album cover, there's a tiny, tiny, tiny picture of Dennis at the drive-in on the front cover to the far right. Right. Um, And it was the only one. He's the only one who went to the movie theater, uh, the drive-in. Nobody knows what drive-in it is. Unfortunately, we don't have any details. Uh, I asked around. Nobody has any idea. Um, (laughs) And Dennis is unfortunately not here to tell us. Um, but I was able to get the full size image of that tiny, tiny picture, and I did run it in the uh, the new issue. Um, it's interesting. I have no idea what this movie is. I did a little research to see, you know, movies playing in drive-ins in '64 to kind of get some sort of, you know, right. but I couldn't I couldn't nail it down. I have no <laughs> idea what movie's on the screen. But um, the funny thing to me about that was. Dennis missed recording sessions. Dennis usually missed photo shoots. Dennis was, nobody really knew, ever knew where Dennis was. Right. And yet Dennis is the one guy at the drive-in. So I don't know how they managed to nail him down to go do this, but I just thought that that was interesting, that he was the one guy they got to. Uh, he might have just been going anyway. Th- yeah. That could very right. well be. <laughs> that could very well have been the case. So we go from a comical song like Drive-In to, well, just pure comedy with our favorite recording sessions, which is a series of uh, just clips of the guys goofing around in the studio, and some of it's genuinely funny. In a dorky way, I mean, the, the, I, we should we should just, if anybody's never heard this before, we should probably just use the word comic, li- you know, loosely. Um, because, you know, when I asked Mike about this, he said, you know, Brian and I were really silly growing up. We would act so stupid just to make each other laugh. And this track was just the residual effect. You know, I've got two brothers. That's that's what I hear. I, it's it's just a very familial, you know, roll them. Okay, well, let's talk to each other like we normally do. Okay. Right. And then to close the album, we have, well, it's a significant song in the history of the Beach Boys because it would be their last song to reference surfing until four years later with Do It Again. And I'm talking about Don't Back Down. Mike loves still love, he loves this song. He, and, and in fact, the Beach Boys on their 50th anniversary tour did perform it. And I even played Mike the alternate version of the song. Right. And and he kind of went, wow. He didn't remember because you know it's interesting. I think a lot of fans because we can just pull out an album and listen to something. We automatically assume the guys remember everything from 50 years ago. And and no way. Right. Of course. No way. So a lot of this interview with Mike, I had to play sessions for him and and kind of remind him of things and, and just kind of go, you know, well, hold on a minute, let me play this for you, see what you, like him in the booth, you know, directing the other guys, that type of thing. So he's very involved in the process. And again, I think in, I would not be surprised if he actually asked Mike Point Blank, is this, in your opinion, the Beach Boys album? He'd say, heck yeah, because they were involved. You know, right. Dennis was there. They were involved. And I think that that's another reason to me that it speaks to being the consummate Beach Boy album, let alone the, the consummate Beach Boy summer album. Well, one of the great things about Endless Summer Quarterly is that you can uh, pick up the current issue, the summer issue, and get to hear, uh, or get to read, rather, Mike going through all of these tracks, just like uh, you and I did. Yeah. And he's got, obviously, a, a little more insight than uh, you and I would, because he was yeah. actually there. <laughs> yeah. but, yeah, he, uh, even, he even discusses Monkey's Uncle, because that oh, was recorded of the 64 with uh, Annette Funicello. 
And uh, I even played him the theme to Karen for the NBC oh, television series. And he sings lead on that. You know, it's yeah. 47 seconds long, but he goes, I do not remember that. <laughs> <laughs> And I wish that I always wish that had been fleshed out. I really like that uh, that melody oh, for the song. Great song, song. Yeah. it's a great yeah. song. So, what's yeah. uh, coming up in the uh, upcoming issue of Endless Summer, the fall issue? Well, the fall issue is going to um, the the summer issue dealt completely with studio albums. So, the the first half of the the, the summer issue is all summer long. Second half being. A kind of a track by track interview with Dean Torrance of Jan and Dean about the Ride the Wild Surf and the Little Old Lady from Pasadena albums right. that came out in fall of '64, one month apart. So they were just as busy as the Beach Boys were because they were full time college students. So the only time they had available to do anything was during the summer. So they would tour and record. So they, you know, so the fall issue of Endless Summer Quarterly will then focus on the concert, the live performance album concert album from 50 years ago and just kind of live performances in general because you know it was uh the tammy show hosted by jan and dean that the beach boys appeared in that was really the big concert of the year uh in november of 64 that had james brown uh the rolling stones you know leslie gore yep Jerry and the Pacemakers. I mean, every, you know, okay, granted, the Beatles weren't there. Okay. (laughs) But just about everybody else was. I mean, it was quite an event. And um, it's really cool, you know, watching that. You know, the DVD's available uh, on Amazon or anywhere else if people want to pick it up. But it's a great concert, and uh, Jan and Dean were at the top of their, they they were as popular as the Beach Boys and the Beatles in '64 at that point in their career, and it's it's really a fascinating time in music in general. So the next issue will, um, I'll be interviewing Mike again about the album. I'll hopefully get a chance to talk to Al Jardine and Brian Wilson about it too. But uh, the neat thing I thought about, you know, uh, you know, 50 years later type of thing and. 64 is so pivotal. I actually got to hand Mike Love um, this new issue on July 13th. The All Summer Long album was released huh. 50 years ago, July 13th, 1964. And I went to see a concert, the Beach Boys uh, concert, uh, July 13th, 2014. So I think it was a big, bigger deal than I think Mike did. But... <laughs> 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 you know, the guy's got all sorts of awards and things, and he's been doing this for 50 years. I thought it was a big deal. I don't know. Um, but he, he did read it as soon as I handed it to him. And, um, you know, it was it was really cool for me because, you know, when we did the interview, I played the sessions for him. So I, you know, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this out loud, but I burned the CD sessions and handed them to him <laughs> when, I, when I saw him because he doesn't have them. Ah, okay. And I, I thought, how you know that doesn't sound right to me. The guy, the guy who was there should have them. So um, I made it a point um, to to give those to him because I just felt like that was right, um, and he did appreciate that. Um, so that was cool. And seeing the Beach Boys now in 2014, I, I have to say, 2012 was the Beach Boys 50th anniversary with where, where they all got together and they all gave the fans a real special treat by by reuniting. Right. And to me when I saw the show on July 13th it was more about 50 years of music. And and that's really what I took away from the concert. I mean, I took my 12 and a half year old son to his very first Beach Boys show. And I think maybe it had a lot to do with the fact that I was watching my son's reaction to the performance more than I was paying any attention to the show myself. I was watching my son and right. how he was reacting to the music and what it was doing to him and how he was enjoying it. And make, he just loved it, loved it. And um, so afterwards... Um, I know I you know I've I've never you know I've I've had a lot of great opportunities but my 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 12 and a half year old son Ethan has down syndrome and they mm-hmm. the, the guys and he um the guys were really really spe- they really treated him like he was one of them and it was great and they brought him up on stage for Barbara Ann and John Stamos was at this particular concert and uh John brought him right up with him and and they they sang side by side on the microphone and 
just uh, they were just really terrific to him, and they gave him drumsticks after the concert, and a set. Bruce Johnston handed my Ethan a set list, and Ethan gave him a big hug, and so as a dad, um, you know, seeing my son be treated that way, and seeing how he fed off of that, and and was able to. Uh, you, you know how how it affected him. Uh, my God, you know everybody always talks about the healing power of music. Oh, I saw an effect that night. Wow. So I I'm a I'm a just made me you know doing endless summer quarterly for 21 years and and then being able to kind of take my son to have that experience. That kind of told me you know maybe that was the path I was on all this time over 21 years, but it was sure worth it. Well, David, I want to thank you so much for uh, coming on and uh, spending this time with us. And if someone were to be interested in the current or future issues of Endless Summer Quarterly, where would they go? The the, the best place would be esquarterly.com. When you get there, the music will start playing on the ESQ jukebox. And you're going to just want to look at the current cover of All Summer Long. will be right to the right of that small icon. Click on that cover. It'll take you right in and tell you about the the issue you can in, you can order it individually on that page, which is the merchandise catalog page, which breaks down all the issues we've put out. Or you can click another button at the top of the site, which which is uh, order, and that will take you to the information on how to subscribe for a full year. You can also follow us on Facebook, and um, on uh, and from there we have a I have a Twitter account and a. Uh, but that's a lot of explaining. The easiest way is just to go to esquarterly.com, check it out. And actually, once you go in and you click on that, our, our site now has the Facebook icon in the top right corner and the Twitter icon in the top right corner. It'll take you right to it. And uh, come follow us, you know, and if you go to a Beach Boys show, you'll see us at intermission in a video presentation. And uh, we're fortunate and uh, very uh, honored to be, we have an ad if you go to a Beach Boys concert and you buy the tour program, we have an ad in the back. So that'll tell you about how to uh, look us up, too. And I just want to add before we go that uh, I intend to end this conversation with the song Karen uh, by by the Beach Boys, the TV theme song. And I think you and I and maybe some other listeners should all be in collusion to uh, convince the guys to perform this song in concert. Just so you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll go for the record right now. So I, everybody listening. I sent Karen to Mike and Scott Totten <laughs> and said, look, and I even sent them the lyrics. I said, it's only 47 seconds long. You guys would blow people's minds with this. She's a doll, she's a queen, she's a